Radio Caroline is voor anker gegaan voor de oostkust van Engeland. De piratenzender wordt gereed gemaakt om te gaan uitzenden op een golflengte van 319 meter. De eigenaar van de nieuwe Radio Caroline, O'Reilly, is twee jaar bezig geweest met de inrichting van het schip dat de opvolger is van de Mi Amigo die in maart 1980 is gezonken. Het nieuwe schip heeft een 90 meter hoge zendmast. De grote baas, O'Reilly, heeft alle voorzorgen genomen om een eventueel ingrijpen van de justitie te voorkomen. You know, we supply from Spain and you know, we have international advertising. Our head office is in Los Angeles and, and New York. And the, the, the station is run in strict uh, compliance with all of the local legislations in the various European countries. Zendschip voor Radio Caroline ligt voor de Engelse oostkust klaar om te gaan uitzenden. Van Radio Caroline is voor anker gegaan voor de oostkust van Engeland. De piratenzender wordt nu in snel tempo gereed gemaakt om de uitzendingen te kunnen beginnen. Het nieuwe zendschip Caroline ligt vlak in de buurt van zijn voorganger, de Mi Amigo, die in maart 1980 is gezonken. De oude zendmast steekt nog steeds boven het water uit. Maar de tegenslag van toen heeft de grote baas van Caroline niet belet om door te gaan. De Mi Amigo nam in de tijd afscheid van zijn luisteraars met het volgende bericht. Ik zal je dat due to the severe weather conditions and also to the fact that we're shipping quite a lot of water, we are closing down. And the crew are at this stage leaving the ship. Maar eigenaar O'Reilly kocht in 1981 alweer een nieuw schip dat hij in Spanje liet uitrusten. Nu, na twee jaar hard werken, is de nieuwe Caroline klaar voor uitzending. Met een zender die veel sterker is en een zendmast die met zijn 90 meter veel hoger is dan de vorige. O'Reilly heeft alle voorzorgen genomen om een ingrijpen van de justitie te voorkomen. You know, we supply from Spain. And you know we have international advertising. Our head office is in Los Angeles and, and New York, and the, 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 the station is run in strict uh, compliance with all of the local legislations in the various European countries. Now, since the introduction of independent local radio in the UK, of course, people have been uh, have been able to advertise on on British radio. Doesn't that mean that there's there's less of a need for stations like Radio Caroline? Well, of course, the, 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 you know, the beauty of Caroline is uh, that it's totally a relationship between this station and the audience. And, you know, the audience is the, you know, the absolute uh, decision maker. And if, if the audience don't want to listen to us, if nobody wants to listen, then there's no ball game. But, uh, you know, we've never had that problem. De Nederlandse justitie erkent dat men tegen de nieuwe piratenzender niets kan ondernemen als die in de toekomst op Nederland gerichte reclame zou gaan uitzenden. De nieuwe Radio Caroline is intussen proefuitzendingen begonnen op een golflengte van 319 meter. Voor de oostkust van Engeland is een nieuw zendschip voor anker gegaan. Het is Radio Caroline, waarvan de zender gereed wordt gemaakt om uit te zenden op de middengolf, 319 meter. De eigenaar van Radio Caroline, O'Reilly, is twee jaar bezig geweest met de inrichting van het schip dat de opvolger is van de Mi Amigo, dat zonk in maart 1980. De zendmast van het nieuwe schip is 90 meter hoog. De eigenaar heeft alle voorzorgen genomen om een eventueel ingrijpen door de justitie te voorkomen. When Radio Caroline goes on air again tomorrow and the Jolly Roger flies once more off the Essex coast, memories of radio's buccaneer days will be revived. Good evening, it sometimes seems to be acceptable. Any Radio 1 disc jockey has to be able to quote a spell at sea, preferably aboard Caroline. But in these days of licensed commercial radio, is there still a place for pirate pop? We'll be reporting on that later. Also, the heat airs in Prospect, which is just as well for Radio Caroline, which rises from a watery grave tomorrow. Three years ago, the Mi Amigo, the converted Panamanian cargo ship carrying that first and most infamous of the offshore pirate radio stations, sank in a howling gale off Clacton. 
From 12 noon tomorrow, Caroline's back on the air and Marcus Powell's been to talk to the latest band of disc jockeys to raise the Jolly Roger. Radio Caroline has been reborn in a converted Grimsby trawler christened Imagine as a tribute to the late John Lennon. It's been registered under a Panamanian flag of convenience, refitted in Spain and returned to lie in the shelter of two sandbanks 17 miles off Clacton. It's home for a somewhat illegitimate band of six disc jockeys and their tiny crew. And just to make sure their presence doesn't go unnoticed, they've installed a massive 300-foot aerial designed to bring non-stop music to most of Britain and coastal Europe. Radio 1 is on the air for basically for teenagers and Radio 2 is on the air for sort of late 30s onwards and the ILR stations it's very difficult to work out just who they're on the air for. Uh, we are aiming at the 18 to 40 year old playing the type of songs that wouldn't ordinarily be played on the other networks. Is there a certain amount of romance attached to being a pirate? Oh yeah, I think it's one of the major attractions uh, besides the, uh, the peaceful existence we have out here. Also sort of knowing that really you're not supposed to be here. It's not only an attraction to us, but also an attraction to the listeners as well. The authorities are obviously uh, keeping their ears uh, fully open. I would imagine they are. Yeah. Um, have you had any visits? Um, we had the Essex police out one day. They sort of circled the boat from about uh, 40, 50 yards away, taking one or two photographs. But there's nothing really they can do. I mean, we're outside of territorial limits and whatever. Um, I mean, it was madness out here last Sunday morning, for example. We had about 12 boats around, uh, all from the shore, from Felixstowe, Clacton, places like that, just sightseers coming out to see us, <laughs> taking photographs, throwing the Sunday papers on board. It was great fun. Does it worry you at all, though, that you are sort of uh, flying in the face of the law? It doesn't worry me personally, no. I mean, uh, I was caught once before in the 70s. Uh, it was quite an exciting uh, trip, really. We were being chased up the estuary by the Home Office, and uh, they eventually got hold of us with the assistance of a couple of police launchers, and uh, we were taken to court, and I was found uh, £100. It was back in 74. But it doesn't really bother me that much. Do you think that sort of uh, problems, are you likely to run into problems with the authorities again, or do you think they're going to leave you I think alone? there's always that possibility, but we just have to keep our fingers crossed. The fate of Mia Migo, Caroline's old home, is long forgotten, although reminders protrude from her watery grave just ten miles away. But now there's a spirit of optimism that the same thing just couldn't happen again. At least the captain's convinced that everything looks good. She's 100% uh, uh, maintenance is carried out on her. She's a Icelandic trawler, built for bad weather, as you can see on the lines as it's on the vessel. Um, I don't think I'll face any problems. Um, People want me to get to the bad gales that are common in the North Sea in the winter? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. I cannot, uh, cannot comment on that yet. We've, uh, the most I've had here is a uh, northeasterly five to six. And Tom, you were here the, the day the ship went down. Can you tell us what happened? Yes. Um, the other ship was, was old, but we'd been in rough weather for about three days. And I actually woke up at about midday, having been on the air throughout the night, and opened the door to go outside and discovered uh, one of these wartime beacons. The nearest one was normally about a mile away from us, maybe two miles. It was, in fact, 50 yards away. It was the one that was the next one down the line, and I think we'd drifted about 10 miles that point. Was it then immediately necessary to uh, send out an SOS? Not a question of an SOS, informing the Coast Guards that we were drifting, although we weren't in any immediate danger. And the main thing to do was to get the spare anchor down. And it was really a very unfortunate situation where the, the spare anchor held and at low tide the ship actually sat on the corner of a sandbank. And that is what caused her to sink, the fact that when the tide rose she banged against the bottom continually and eventually something gave way. And the lifeboats had to... Uh, the lifeboat was there. Yeah. It had been there for uh, about eight hours standing by and trying to ask us to come off and, um, until the ship was in danger. Obviously, we wouldn't. It seems Caroline's here to stay, a prospect that delights fans but doesn't go down too well with the authorities. They, of course, are also tuned in, but for quite different reasons, although there's nothing much they can do while Caroline sits defiantly in international waters. Listening in is technically an offence, and supplying the ship certainly is, which of course all adds a clandestine flavour to the whole affair. But proving anything's a very tricky business. 
Jamming's not really a practical possibility either for the Department of Trade. With Caroline pumping out 50 kilowatts of power, they'd virtually have to blast it into orbit to stop the signal. It all adds up to the right environment for a pretty happy band of pirates. If anything does go wrong, it's always blamed on Eric. But Eric can't be tracked down either. In fact, he doesn't even exist. Well, we'll take a break now. In part two, an attempt at Milton Keynes to literally beat away into the record books and another crop of viewers' views in right now. <laughs>